Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. So today that will be overloaded because we canceled the meeting last week for, uh, we did, I was alone as far as I can tell, uh, available for running it. Uh, we had production uh, operation that were planned that day. So the combination of, of all of these make it, made it harder. Today around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Lerve Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stéphane is off, Bruno is off, and Kevin is there with us. Hey. So announcements from the two past week. Uh, the Jenkins version 2.413 and 2.414 are available. Um, last week. Uh, um this week so i haven't had time to finish a command but i started an issue about the release process so the the goal is to track somewhere because i took we already had an help desk issue which we didn't we already have an help desk issue for infrastructure about moving all the publication process to release ci which is something that is discussed but today we want to automate the manual task where we create an annotated tag and we publish the draft release. That is something that changed compared to six months ago, for instance, and it's a manual step documented on the release process. So I've opened an issue because these steps could be automated, at least for the weekly release. Uh, Mark, I saw the discussion you had with Tim Jacob about, yeah, maybe we can or cannot automate it for the LTS core release, which should be doable, but that was the exchange. For security release, that will need to update, that will need to an exchange with the GenSec team. Another fun thing, Mark, we discover with Irvin realized I was a bit uh, enthusiastic to create the tag. And I created the tag before the packaging build was finished. And I Which realized it was not available on get.jenkins.io exactly. yet. Exactly. I need to add a comment that one of the release parts on the release process uh, must be done. That's the part that push it at least on the archive Jenkins.io mirror. So get Jenkins.io as at least one example. I didn't realize this one, so we need to track it and I need to add a comment on the issue I created earlier. Well, and my apologies that that race condition is there. I I thought it was valuable enough to do the pull from git from get.jenkins.io even with the race condition because I was aware of the race condition when I proposed it and accepted the race. But obviously if we lost the race once, we need to, to implement a, a fix. Yep. Um... So last week, your uh, release went well. This week, we had two issues. So the one we just mentioned, and another one, uh, since we upgraded Kubernetes last week, I ran a replay of the package thing because I wanted to check that the agent were properly uh, created on the uh, corresponding node pool to avoid a bad surprise today. And packaging failed due to a replayed build. It'll take, because when you replay your build, that clean up the parameters. And as we already have an issue on Jenkins infra release, we still have an old, old issue that say, hey, if there isn't a previous build, then we are stuck. Where is the, that one? Oh, it's on packaging. Uh, we. I think that's the, that one. So the initial build on a given branch for the package process, at least, and I'm sure the release has the same issue. The first build is failing and need to be retried a second time. Each time we create a new LTS, the dot one of LTS has that problem. And the replay on the master branch that I did cleaned up the previous versions. So today's packaging weekly build failed due to the same reason. It didn't have a default value, so it failed because it was empty. And the shell script fails if it's empty. So we have good safeguards, but we need to solve at the pipeline level to provide a default value that could at least allow us to replay. Because I don't know for the LTS initialization, but for the weekly release, it shouldn't happen. 
So reply the build and that's okay. Uh, I need to open an issue or at least update the existing issue. Uh, let me add this to open issue or command on existing track this. Uh, race condition need to wait until war is available on get the Jenkins IO. That's all for me for the weekly releases. Is there, is there something else to add? So I've confirmed that the container image downloads and builds successfully. So, so that part was successful even after the race condition got exercised. So the rebuild must have worked. That's great. Thanks. And the change log has been merged. Thanks to Kevin for proposing changes to the change log. There was an oddity in the change log that sometimes happens where the automated change log generates unexpected things. And I didn't do the investigation to figure out why. I just fixed it. Just a note about the change logs. I'm impressed because since one year, Mathominus, um, we have the weekly release and the change log done the same day, every week. That's really impressive. It sounds normal now, today, but trust me, one year and a half ago, that wasn't easy to have this kind of timeline. So congratulations to everyone involved in the process. That's really efficient. Well, and thanks to Tim Jacom for his automation of, of Jenkins change logs. It really is a much better experience thanks to his automation. Yeah. That's all for me on the weekly releases from both weeks. Anything to add or questions or things to clarify? Cool. Uh, regarding the announcements, um, next week I will be off. So I need you folks either to run the meeting or to cancel it. So I'm available to run the, the, the Zoom part of it. If mm -hmm. Hervé is willing to run the the actual meeting agenda part of it. Mm. Is Stefan back next week? I no, that's know. why I'm asking. Stefan and Bruno will be off, so that will be only the three of you. So maybe we just intentionally cancel? Yeah, don't uh, mind. I, I what do you think, Hervé? Yeah. Yeah. Hervé, uh, you will, will you be off? In two weeks, no, when I no, will be back? No, uh, I won't be off in July. Okay, so that means uh, that we move to the 20, 25 of July. Is that correct? Right. Oh, let's cancel next week meeting. And run the 25. Sounds good? Yes. Eric, yes. can I ask you to update the milestone I created just before the meeting to update it from yes. 18 to 25? Sure. Okay. That's all for me on announcement. Do you have other announcement, folks? No? Okay. So then let's continue with the upcoming calendar. So next weekly won't be delayed like the meeting. So next week we will have the 2.415 version. Uh, I've already forgot the next LTS. Um, Not yet. Uh, so 2.401.3 will release uh, uh, soon. Let's see. So baseline or... or release candidate today so releasing in two weeks on the 26th of july okay today tomorrow the new baseline will be selected and the new baseline is likely 2.414 because 2.413 looked very good and i don't expect any surprises from 2.414 okay um plan the 26 okay so I guess we will check the next baseline uh, in two weeks during the weekly meeting. Correct. Yeah, the, there's 
there's no crisis for us. Whatever baseline is selected doesn't doesn't have significant impact on infrastructure. Perfect. Um, there is an advisory announced earlier today publicly for tomorrow. Um, I haven't checked the it's content. Concerned. And it concern uh, uh, nothing like announced. When, nothing yeah, has uh, been plugin, plugin. Yeah. plugin only. Plugin only. I don't know okay. what has been announced publicly. I just so Daniel. We announced it in uh, about uh, oh. three hours ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I saw the title of the mail, but I haven't looked at the body. Let's look it together. It's public. Yes, it is public, and let's look at it. It's so for oh, Jenkins plugins, only. not Jenkins core. Absolutely. So. Sorry, Hervé, I, I cut you. Uh... Okay. So plugins only. Um, so that that means that they, the GenSec team might need to access CI Jenkins IO. I was late on com on pinging them on that element. Thanks, Hervé, for catching that. Really, because otherwise they would have been um, slowed down on that process. Uh, they will use the new CI Jenkins IO. So if any of uh, the current plugin version are uh, are at yeah are concerned, then they would have to update it. Otherwise, they only need trusted CI Jenkins IO to be up so they can publish Jenkins IO website when needed. Yeah, but shouldn't we shouldn't shouldn't we actively assume that a restart of CI.jenkins.io will be, yeah. be required yeah. just in case? Yep. I mean, uh, okay, we don't know. They haven't told us which plugins are involved. They haven't publicly disclosed yep. which plugins, but it feels safe to just say, we're going to restart yep. ci.jenkins.io tomorrow. And then if we don't, okay, we smile and say we didn't. Yep, absolutely. Um, is there a volunteer to open the status here? I can do that if that's helpful. I have done that before and I'm comfortable with it. Okay, thanks. So Hervé, I saw you were a bit slower to answer than Mark, or maybe the electron from Paris are slower. That means you are dizzy. you are volunteer to review and approve Mark's pull request and status. So, and and I assume Sorry. we set it for a time tomorrow. Um, let's see, uh, did they tell us, did they say in the public announcement the time they're publishing? Not on the public announcement, but uh, okay. you, you might have a timeline, so or we'll deal with that privately until we, we know when they start. Usually, uh, they always start at so it's uh, one p.m. for me, so that will be eleven a.m. UTC. Yeah, I'll so, I'll just I'll make up a time, put it on the yeah. status, and then we'll correct the time because they can restart at any time they want, right? I mean, it's it's whatever pace works for them, but we just alert that we expect a restart there because it may. Okay, uh, I will take care of upgrading all the plugin from trusted CI and CI Jenkins later today. So diff when they will update plugin will be as uh, tiny as possible. Thank you, thank you. That's very considerate. I see one plugin update pending right now. Cool. I saw seven on trusted as well, so gotta check. Mm. Great. Okay, uh, next major event, I don't have any. Okay, so let's remove it then. And we can start with the huge list of things that has been done. I will try to be as, as fast as possible, I promise. <laughs> um, thanks, Hervé, for the work on integrating CI Jenkins IO observability in Datadog using the Datadog plugin. So now we have Datadog plugin running on the instance that sends metrics, logs, and traces to the virtual machine Datadog agent, which uh, buffer, bufferize all of that data and send them to Datadog. And now on Datadog, there is a nice section, CI observability that provide dashboards and pipeline execution. And we can see a lot of traces and telemetry. So now we have a full observability integrated in Datadog and we can start doing things such as monitoring builds, uh, for instance, monitoring the builds in infra acceptance tests that could alert us when an agent cannot be spawned or when a package is not able to be installed or 
a lot of things. So these jobs will be really helpful to warn us in case of issues. That will be helpful to study what is the why are the bomb builds taking so much time for simple SH steps. With the telemetry, we can prove that with the traces and a lot of other use cases. So thanks for that work, Hervé. That's really useful and that will open a lot of uh, improved management here. While we are on CA Jenkins IO, it runs on a new virtual machine since last week in a new network, in a new resource group with a new hardware, which is way more powerful and cheaper. Uh, and it runs on a network which does not have any overlap and potential to, to have IPv6. So CI Jenkins IO is not reachable for IPv6, but it could be in the future. The, the former resources have been cleaned up. We did a lot of clean. Uh, thanks, Hervé, for the, the help on there. And if you use to access CI Jenkins IO with SSH, you need to look at the new runbook, like the GenSec team has to do today, because there is a new, a new configuration. It's just hostname change, and you need to use the new VPN, the private one, because we change the network. Uh, any question on that part? Okay, so let's continue. There's been an issue when releasing the JellyDoc Maven plugin. Thanks, Basil, for fixing the issue inside the plugin that was due to the GDK version and the, and the set of transitive problems due to that. Now it's fully working with GDK 11, even 17, but I'm not sure. But I know it's not GDK 8 anymore, fixing the issue. Thanks, Basil, for that. Uh, Hervé, can you give us a word about Windows Server 2022 agents on trusted CI? Why did we do that? And what problem did we solve? So about two weeks ago, I started to work uh, on creating a 2022 version of uh, the Docker agent image to be able to provide Docker in Bound agent 2022. Um, uh, CI.jenkins.io has already uh, uh, Windows 2022 agents configured, but uh, Trusted didn't. So uh, we added them to Trusted. So the Docker agent uh, nano server 2022 and Docker agent uh, Windows Server Core 2022 image could be published on Docker. Thanks. So nice work. Um, I haven't checked the result if the images were published, but I think you did, Hervé. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As they are published, that... and I've used them to test uh, the 2022 version on Docker in Bound Agent. Oh, nice. So it's already building everything. I just have to finish the refactoring of the build process in Docker in Bound Agent with you. So the request is ready. And then uh, creating the 2022 agent, the uh, Docker and Win agent will be as simple as adding a uh, agent type in the Jenkins file. Cool. So there is a part that now should move to the SIG uh, regular meeting uh, because we did what we needed to prove that the infrastructure did their work. Anyway, we still need Windows Server 2022 for the infrastructure because we have the uh, release package that build the Windows official MSI during the core releases. It's running using uh, 2019 line images, even not even LTS. So we will need to build uh, inbound agent or to use inbound agent 2022 so we can upgrade the node pool, the Kubernetes node pool used behind the, behind the hood. And also we have the ACI Windows agent and CI Jenkins IO that are used to run Maven builds on different Java versions inside the Windows environment. This should also be a target to use the brand new 2022 agent. We are building custom images today with Docker on Windows that inherit from these images that Hervé is publishing. So we will have then to update our own builds. In the future, we will also that would allow us to switch 
every system to Windows Server 2022 LTS. We will need to keep the 2019 builds, but these can be built from a 2022 server Docker with Docker now. It will use virtual machine, it's a bit slower, but a different isolation level, it's not virtual machine. But yeah, uh, so that means uh, we can move everything as recommended by Azure. Oh, that was not to everywhere. Is there any question about that target and usage? No, okay. Uh, Mark, can you give us just a, a head up on the Jenkins board uh, repository? Uh, so we've adopted the board or uh, uh, we're using the repository that was created. Uh, we've got agreement between me and Alex Brandes that we'll continue using it. And it's it's got content. I'm sure we'll do more with it as time goes on right now. It's just a content archive, but it could certainly be posted to some place like governance.jenkins.io or or see this archive.jenkins.io or you know etc that, that's it's its initial purpose is met and i am pleased to announce that one action item that was on my list for probably two years is gone <laughs> yeah <laughs> thanks mark any question yeah uh uh, Alex mentioned it in uh, one of the issue of pull request. Does this also means you are already using ACMD or you will use ACMD for I, the meeting? No, because Alex and I haven't settled yet, and I'm the note taker okay. for the governance meeting right now. My strong preference is still Google Docs. I appreciate that everybody likes ACMD, but editing editing Markdown live in a meeting okay. is more difficult for me. So for me, I'm still prone to keep using Google Docs. Google Docs I've got to talk Markdown with Alex. support. Yeah. What's that? You have Markdown support on Google Docs. I don't oh, know. And, and in fact, that's what we do is I run a Markdown converter from Google Docs to output it to Markdown. It's very simple. It works great. And so, but for me, the editing experience in Google Docs is faster. It's okay. just easier for me if, I, if I'm live in a meeting in Google Docs. I was asking so, it because uh, I saw the current export of the archive from 2020 to 2023 is one unique uh, Markdown file. And I was about to propose to to split it in uh, daily or monthly or um, like the other archive. And uh, with that, I don't know, you might have to adapt your process for Archiving no, is no problem. It's trivial. If we want to split it to a, a file per per meeting, that's easy to easy to do, and I fully support that. If that's easier, or that I have no problem with writing an individual file. That's what I did with the most recent notes. Is I had to update them. I extracted the current, ran it, and it was easy. So happy okay. to do that. No problem. Yeah, I'm great if we split it to individual meeting per file. If that's easier for people, I am happy with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's continue. We had an issue build monitor plugin failing with 401 unauthorized. Uh, so that one was due to RPU repository permission updater build failures untrusted. I don't recall if the timeline was due to the outage I caused uh, last Friday or uh, something else, but that was the cause. And as soon as the, the build ran again properly, then the problem was fixed for Basil. Update GitHub user to authorize as committer. So thanks. I think it's, I guess it's um, Alex. So someone added yes. for permissions. So thanks for this one. Test history page on CI Jenkins for COVID is inaccessible. I don't remember what was that issue. It was uh, oh, yes. after your site switch, controller switch. Yeah, okay. So that, that issue was due to another, yeah, the S3, uh, the S3. So there were too much builds. So the page 
mentioned by Alex that was in error. Uh, it's the proxy timeout on Apache because it took two to three to four minutes to load at the beginning. Uh, due to another issue we'll see later, we were able to rotate the builds. So back to an effective limit of 50 builds in the history of the master branch of Jenkins core. And now the time is 30 to 40 seconds, which is below the minutes. So no more timeouts. So yeah, thanks for reporting. Thanks, Uli, uh, because Uli pointed an issue on the GUnit plugin that could have been related to that. So yeah, uh, now it's working, so no more problem. Uh, there were requests to add users so they can access to Gen to Jenkins CI team. Uh, releasing to incremental yields 503 that was two weeks ago. So the incremental publisher was failing because someone here bumped the Node.js core version to trying to clean up the image. And of course that person named Damien Duportal, which is me, uh, didn't uh, test it thoroughly. So uh, it started to fail. It has been fixed. But also, well, but... we had a secondary issue that was initially um, it's using it's authenticating authenticating on CI Jenkins IO API to retrieve information to get the build artifacts. That authentication is not mandatory, but could be used for API rate limiting. I'm still having mixed feelings about that. And I don't know how and why, but with CI Jenkins IO migration to a new virtual machine, the token of the technical user we use disappeared. Mm -hmm. So of course the presented token, since it was there were no token defined on, for that user on CI Jenkins IO, so CI tried to pass that token as an LDAP password to our LDAP, which of course said, ah, no, that's not the right password to use. So effectively it failed. So yeah, we created a new token on CI Jenkins IO. I'm sure I added the instruction and it was pushed on our secret store. And once we deployed, that's okay. Yeah. Sorry, Mark, go ahead. So I think you missed one, one part of that story, which was incremental's publisher was not running Dependabot at all, right? So it was oh, yeah. way behind and you found that problem, fixed that problem. And of course that meant there was a flurry of updates and and I blindly approve many of those flurry of updates. And so there was this terrifying period of blind approval because CI passed, but CI was doing almost no verification. So yeah, that, thank you. Thank you to all involved in fixing that. The, I, I guess I've got a question. Is, is there a way we should safety check our Dependabot pages to be sure that if Dependabot is enabled, it's not showing an error. Because I know plugins I maintain have that where on occasion I'll make a mistake and I break Dependabot. And of course it stops submitting submitting pull requests because I broke it. But separate topic, mm -hmm. another that, time. That, that, that's hard. I will say, um, I, I don't know if we can catch if Dependabot is broken, but uh, checking for the last, uh, image update, which was two years ago for incremental publisher or one year and a half and checking for the presence of uh, eventually the last. No, it's not. We, uh, I'm not sure if there is something on the GitHub API for update CLI. You could look at the last builds, but yeah, I don't so, know. So well, we might a web... be able to go ahead. We may be able to check the uh, to to um, to pull the check status and put a uh, data dog alert on it. Something like that, maybe. You're you're all so sophisticated. I'd read the web page mm. for the dependency graph that says I'm broken and use that. Uh, I know that Olivier is working on a dashboard for update CLI for that specific usage because the problem is that you need an uh, ex today, whatever solution we choose, you need an exhaustive list of the prod of the repositories that we need to check, and the more repository we'll create, the more we need to update that list. That can be uh, okay, but yeah, there is that. Th that's a complicated topic, and I I don't know how is dependent about answering yeah. to that. Uh, I would say uh, with a cron running uh, around uh, running every repository and check if there is a new dependent about config to add it to the repository to check the 
I'm, I'm yeah. just curious. But then how to exclude repository that I don't need the Thunderbot for a lot of good reasons. A config. Uh, you can create a pull request with a new one and uh, add an exception list uh, mm -hmm. to be reviewed by humans. Yeah, but that will mean but, a lot yeah. of process and things. But that's that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Um, I, Best, best if I just submit a ticket. If that the ideas go go into tickets very nicely, let me take it there. Mm -hmm. And the the main cause of the second problem was uh, the tests inside the application were on testing. Yeah, the I reality don't, of the I production. Don't, I, don't I don't understand how, that. Yeah, I don't know how the npm build and test step passed. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. and and we have similar say, cases in other things. We've got a backend extension indexer bug report right now that has is highlighting that its tests are not testing anything useful, and we had a <laughs> we had a failure in the pipeline step stock generator that its tests were not testing anything useful. So so that's a common pattern. There are there are a number of places where we we would benefit by more tests. Our apps were tests. Are not testing the, the, the tests are necessary, but they're not sufficient, right? They're really not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but now it's working well. So thanks everyone involved because uh, at least six person were involved on fixing that issue. So thanks. Um, branch strategy on CI Jenkins IO diverged from prior configuration. A consequence of the migration as well. Um, a VM migration, since we had a, we had to recreate a Jenkins home copied from the former one, we weren't able to reuse the former one. Uh, we applied a lot and a lot of uh, cleanup. And also we had issue with the S3 uh, buckets uh, that are archiving artifacts uh, seen at later. So we applied thoroughly any elements. Um, that means we need to think about using job DSL for defining the jobs in CI Jenkins iOS code. So this kind of elements will be easier to update and we could plan it easier because each time you try to scan, you hit the API rate limit on GitHub. Effectively that break all the builds on CI Jenkins IO or no. That makes all the bill waiting on queue with no information saying they are waiting unless you are an admin, which is awful for the end users. To switch to chop DSL for defining. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody, for the IPv6 port. So now get Jenkins IO is properly set up everywhere. And all of the services running on um, uh, on public on the new cluster are all available through IPv6, except CLDAP service. Uh, good point. It's working on a on its own uh, load balancer service. So we could add uh, an IPv6 for CLDAP service, but we don't see the need right now. Yep, because we are the only consumer of LDAP and we don't need IPv6 for the connection to the TCP connection to LDAP. Uh, except LDAP or IPv6. Compatible. Uh, compatible, thanks. Um, S390X, so I've closed that old issue because since we upgraded to 22 two weeks ago, uh, the machine, we don't need to replace it. And by the way, the agent was offline. I don't remember exactly, but there was a quick fix. I think we had to restart CI Jenkins IO and it was upgraded uh, at that moment. So I don't have anything else to add on this one. And we have an open issue for managing it as code in the future. Uh, plugin continuous delivery failed with artifactory permission denied. I don't remember this one, but I guess it was one of the outages. Um, oh no, yeah, uh, that was yeah that was one of the outages. In order to migrate CI Jenkins IO, we had to switch the agent configuration from SSH launcher to inbound, and there was an issue in the code. So. The init script 
is run. That's a funny one. When you use inbound agent with our setup, it uses SH. While it uses bash, when the SSH launcher connects to the machine and start the init script. And if you use that form, the pipe uh, and the end, that is bash only. So that's why we had to change to the usual form, redirect STDR and then pipe. That was a nasty one. Um, next one, uh, Java Act vanished from Docker High Meme. So we had the issue on the templates that has been fixed. Same, it was related to the agent configuration and their content. Uh, so thanks, uh, Alex, for that. IPv6 again, that has been validated with the new cluster, as we mentioned. And uh, during the, the, the changes, we, we did some misconfiguration. So we had uh, people we, who are using RFC compliant DNS resolver in the organization. During one day, they weren't able to reach Get Jenkins IO because the IPv6 record was answered and all the HTTP clients are honoring the IPv6 connection if they find a DNS record AAAA and they have IPv6 capability instead of falling back to IPv4. So we remove the record, we fix the IPv6 and had it back to record and the user confirmed that it was fixed for them. So thanks everybody for the job here because that wasn't an easy one and we had to learn that part, uh, let's say on the go. And so, yeah, I can announce that public cluster has been fully migrated to the new network on your new cluster and we removed every leftovers except uh, a network that is uh, soon to be removed, which means we don't have any more overlap issues and everything is running on a clean and modern network. That has been a multiple weeks uh, effort by Hervé, sustained by the rest of the team. So great job. Now we have a proper cluster to work with. The first consequence of this one is that now we pay $500 each month less than before, just due to the, the fix-ups and the new setups, which is modern. So direct victory. Of course, we had an LTS that has been released to all of our controller using the LTS line. I don't think there is something to add on this one. That's usual. We had a few closed as not planned. Uh, since we migrated all the cluster, we don't need to back up that cluster. Um, we had issue during the outage of Friday about Miros Jenkins IO timing out. Uh, there was a mysterious issue about someone saying, I want to install it doesn't download. And that's all the information we had. So. I closed it with no information. Thanks, Hervé, because that could have been an issue with the mirror, so that made sense to move it to LDesk. Uh, close does not planned. Also, we only have one agent, and there is no need for us to have uh, an agent. And additionally, the discussion we had with Olivier and Daniel two years ago is that running some uh, an agent that we don't control is risky for the trusted CI ports. Since the initial need was to provide Docker images for that CPU architecture, and we are using KMU to provide these images since at least one year, there is no need for that. And the native machine running on CI Jenkins IO is perfectly fine and would allow native tests if we have a plugins or an artifact that needs to run on native hardware without emulation. That can happen. In that case, CI Jenkins IO will be the way to go. Finally, I closed an old issue about importing and manage AWS resources, because now we already manage the Kubernetes cluster and we are getting away from AWS. We have three virtual machine left and then we won't need it. So that's why I closed the issue because no need to spend our time on this one. We already have a Terraform AWS that manage the current resource that should stay here. And by the way, one of the machine which host the update center cannot be managed properly through the, the EC2 API because it's running on a, let's say, AWS maintained manual hypervisor and it cannot implement half of the features of EC2. So trying to manage it with Terraform is risky and I don't want to take that risk because that could end on stopping the machine and making it 
unrecoverable. And we don't want that. Better to migrate it properly and then we'll be okay. Any question until now? Things we forgot uh, that we closed and I forgot. Oh, okay. Work in progress. We had a new issue about the Jira upgrades. Uh, I saw there's been a setup on Jira that a uh, default setup that has been changed. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm Jira admin, so in theory I could do it, do it, but I have no idea what that feature is. I I don't know if we can do it. So it's and Daniel Beck is is a Jira admin. So if okay. there's anybody who knows how to do it, it's Daniel Beck. And so it may just be as simple as us saying plus one to to set the uh, the behavior. Daniel, can you do it? Because okay. because like you, Damien, I am a Jira administrator, but I'm scared as can be to make administrator level changes because I don't have the expertise that Daniel does. Thing. Okay. So then in that case, if it's okay for everyone, I will add a command saying that to Daniel after the meeting, remove the triage, but also remove it from any milestone because it's not something we should expect. Unless Daniel say, I can't, I need you to do it. And then right. you and I will have to take that issue. And that will right. go back to the milestone. And then, we, then we, we learn enough about Jira admin to do it safely by doing it together. Ask Daniel or team and remove from milestones not an infra ask but need to be tracked in l disk okay is that okay for all of you yes um aws decrease aws cost so short term i didn't have time but i need to do it later today i need to report on the june billing what is the status of our spendings I guess we will uh, it stay almost the same since the past three weeks. I haven't seen anything any we have put alerts and we saw the alerts two months ago. so a peak of increase would have uh, would have been mentioned to us. Uh, so I need to report and give a status here. Then the other task for that issue uh, in order to decrease, so I propose that, we should be able to close it and create a new one just to focus on the new item. The new step will be remove the free virtual machines that are currently running and consuming half of the credits monthly. One is update Jenkins CI with the packaging machine. And then we have two other tiny machines, Sansus and Usage. I think it's Usage. Is that okay for you if I report and close this one on the upcoming issue and create a new one so we can narrow the scope and avoid being it to two verbos? Yes. Okay. Uh, got a close in favor of a new one is title scope. Need to report for June before. Okay. Uh, almost closable, but not closed yet. Kubernetes 1.25. Uh, so we did the heavy lifting, including a big general outage of the cluster that we had to recreate from scratch. So first, good work, Hervé, because your work allowed us to recreate a brand new production cluster in less than half a day. <laughs> so thanks a lot for the support and the work here. Um, I still have a post-mortem, Mark, I was thinking about writing the postmortem on the Jenkins IO blog post because it was uh, in, the impact was clearly outside our team. So I would prefer doing it afterwards. Is that okay for you? That will be yes, a great I, I place. Yes, I think that'd uh, be great. If you don't mind describing what we learned, and I think that would be a great place to put it. Absolutely. So that's, we need to finish the postmortem. That was an issue with an accumulation of... Um, uh, configuration change directly related to IPv6 and the way it works with Kubernetes. Um, but we also learn and propose some, uh, let's say, improvement. So for instance, the public IP that were deleted, changing effectively all the external DNS resolution of everyone trying to download, 
uh, that should not happen in the future. So we were able to find, thanks to uh, Hervé Researches, locks. So we have the concept of we can lock resources so they cannot be deleted. What will happen next time if we delete the Kubernetes cluster and the public IP are part of one of the automatically managed resource groups? Then the deletion of the resource group will fail at the end because the public IP has lock that say do not delete. So we have added that as a security and it's managed as code. That's a minimum improvement. Um, and as Tim said, so I don't, I don't know if you saw this one, Hervé. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I saw that. So we don't need the lock protection for we IP don't... because we can't create them outside of the yeah. cluster not pool. Exactly. Group. We can avoid that transitive implicit deletion in the future. Uh, so I propose that we, yeah, we can keep it. Uh, we can add this uh, directly on, on the commands of the load balancer, even if it's uh, the default value. So we can add a command pointing here saying, hey, you can add them on another resource group if you have to recreate it next time. Next. Uh, yeah. Next For us. Destruction. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, when I mean... is the next Kubernetes upgrade? <laughs> hey. At least, the, at least we know that we are able to. Uh, most of it is stateless. And that's at, at least we don't have any more pet cluster running for three years, and we are confident in its recreation. So absolutely, and the backup LDAP system that Olivier built and that you uh, checked and refreshed during the migration shows that we don't lose data. <laughs> so. Because I, I have to admit that during at least 20 minutes, I was almost sure that we lost the world LDAP data and it yeah, wasn't the best moment of my life. Uh, another improvement is that we have a technical administrative user used to administrate the cluster from our Kubernetes management system. That technical user is a service account. And the only way to create it is a script inside my machine, which is absolutely not sustainable. So gotta add um, the require element on Terraform since now we have managed as code all the cluster that will create that that user for us and generate the cube config as a sensitive output like I mentioned uh, during the past few months. So we can yeah. only copy and pass the output if we have admin access to Terraform. That should be yeah. quite the improvement. We could also add the yeah. script. A script uh, output to the notes displayed at the end of Terraform to uh, no as output. Well, yeah, we can discuss that later. Yeah, it's okay. a detail. And finally, uh, I need to open the issue for the next Kubernetes upgrade that we I propose that we try to do before September, ideally, uh, just to be sure that we are uh, good enough. Uh, the issue. We'll start with what are the depreciation line of 1.25. So that will help us scheduling a timeline that, that should have the same element that we have. So once these tasks are done, we can close the issue. But the rest of the upgrade has been done successfully. Any question for this one? Right on Jenkins IO. Closable after last subtasks done. Upgrade uh, Ubuntu 22.04 for upgrade campaign. So one, no, two last candidates. Update uh, Jenkins IO is still running. Next one. So as part of the AWS costs, that's a good program. We say, oh, the, that one will allow us to do the upgrade or avoid doing the upgrade. That would be even better. Um, a word about Puppet Jenkins IO, still on Bionic. So we don't have to rush removing it. We have two, two years. However, that will be better to not have an just one machine, not with the same operating system as the others. Um, that one will need, will need, we need to switch to Puppet 7, not Enterprise. Because as for today, the problem is the following. Enterprise version of Puppet doesn't support yet Jammy. 
the, the, I can, there is a huge ticket with a lot of people asking for that. But the open source version works. Why do we use the enterprise? Because we were able to use it for free for the first 10 or 12 machines as an open source project. But it doesn't give us any feature that we have used during the past two years. We used to work with the web UI, which is enterprise, but we haven't done it. So by default, that means we should migrate from Puppet 6 Enterprise to Puppet 7 line or eventually Puppet 8. I, I don't care, but open source. Uh, and then we will have the Puppet server support for Jemmy. The agent is working on Jemmy though. We mentioned a few meeting earlier about using Ansible instead that could have allowed us to change the paradigm and not needing that virtual machine anymore. However, with the recent, uh, let's say, heated discussion on the Red Hat area regarding not only the operating system around the Red Hat ecosystem, but Ansible, which could be suddenly less open source, I'm now having second talked about uh, moving away from puppets. <laughs> there are other solutions that could fit, uh, but yeah. All right. So that's why I propose that we focus on during the summer upgrading to puppet seven, that will allow us to also keep our puppet module updated. Is that okay for everyone? Yes, especially given the 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 noise in the in communities around Red Hat sponsored software. Yeah, I think that's that's very wise. Okay, so I propose we keep that issue on the upcoming milestone because, um, as we'll see a bit later in two bullet points, we will have to work on updates. Jenkins, are you? Is that okay for everyone? Um, next one, CI Jenkins IO fails to delete stashed artifact with access denied. So that one uh, was preventing the build discorder to work effectively on CI Jenkins IO. And that was a chain of problem then. This problem has been fixed. So Hervé, do you want to explain just a bit what we did? What is left to be done? Mm. Um, when uh we reverted to the plugin default configuration which is not deleting anything from s3 s3 uh, storage uh, from the from jenkins as it's a security risk as uh, underlined by jc uh that's also the why these options are specified uh, via gvm option which is cumbersome but it's it's uh, not for, it's for a reason, it's for discouraging uh, people to use to use this option. Um, I think we can close this issue since the production problem is fixed and I, I might, uh, we have to open a new one to, to put in place a service to discard old artifact and stash on S3 via AWS uh, lifecycle policies. Yep. Makes sense. Can I let you do, do this part? Is that OK, Hervé? Yes. It's fixed. And open a new issue about the artifact. So just a note right now, um, during the past two months, we went to 20 cents per day to 60 cents per day. So it increased the cost, but we are still below the $1 per day. Uh, so yeah, the cost is not a risk on short term. That's why we can afford closing this. Thanks, Hervé. Uh, now the next one, the big one that will be split between Hervé and Hai. The goal is to migrate the virtual machine hosting update Jenkins IO, the update center, and PKG origin Jenkins IO the backend that Fastly uses to serve and cache and distribute to remote through CDN network uh, package files. That one is running on an old, old machine on AWS that costs us money, that is locked to Ubuntu 18 right now. Uh, and that's create a lot kind of, of weird issues and maintenance challenges, let's say. So the goal for us is to get away from the current pattern. There are multiple solutions. Um, right now, Hervé, 
is studying um, if we can use Cloudflare Air Tool service, service for the update center. So the challenge here is, uh, can we replace an Apache web server that we run from ages, which is not highly available and subject to issues, to something else where we have a CDN network of something which is an S3 bucket-like or compliant that could be used to distribute. That's the challenge. Uh, we have multiple issues and elements to discuss. I propose that we don't go on details here, but Hervé is working on that area. Two concerns, though, that we need to mention. The first one is we still serve HTTP content without enforcing HTTP to HTTPS redirection. We force the redirection with the mirror downloads, but not on the update center, because it was written on a whole GEP that uh, Hervé uh, studied. That's we had all the instances that were on table to run TLS. Mm, as we discussed a bit, that sounds like an old constraint that shouldn't exist anymore because these instances could not download plugins and plugins have HTTPS enforced. So first of all, independently, enforcing HTTP to HTTPS redirection for update center with the blog post that is required like we did last year with the mirrors, I think that should be a good start. That could, whatever solution we we find for that, for getting away from the virtual machine will be useful. That one is still important. Does it look okay for you, Hervé, Mark? Yes, sorry, I didn't. No problem. Yes, absolutely. It last year for get Jenkins IO, and that will, so good catch Hervé on that area. And Hervé talked also that the current publication process generates HT access file for the update center that create a bunch of redirection depending on specific update center chairs or something. So um, update center is, uh, pre, uh, is highly coupled to Apache. We cannot get away and replace it by an Nginx server somewhere uh, building our own distribution system or using the public uh, S3 buckets from Cloudflare or any, any others. It, is my understanding correct, uh, Hervé, of what we discussed on your last researches? Yeah, it seems so, but there are a lot of HT access rejection generated by this center. And I need to to see why, what's, uh, why, why is uh, there and uh, Maybe ask uh, Daniel for a tour about this code and every all the stuff around the bit center. And one of the compensation that we talked about, because the goal for us is to find a way to decrease the outbound bandwidth represented by the JSON update center file that are served to the end users. That part costs a lot. So it's not the amount of requests that we need to solve. That's the bandwidth. That's what we are paying for. Okay. And additionally, high availability is, uh, is needed. And one of the elements that could be studied, and Mark, you might have the answer, is that could we think about having an HTTP redirection when going to updates, Jenkins, IO slash whatever, if there is a redirection, will it be annulled by the Jenkins core instances? And that I don't know. And, and that would require research across multiple Jenkins instances, at least for a year's worth of Jenkins. It's a very much a Daniel Beck question to ask. He would know, he, he will have forgotten more about that than I will ever know. Okay. Update center index. Because if we have this, that means we can always have our own Apache system, even if it's the container highly available because built and integrated somewhere in one of our clusters. And the redirection, when it ends on, instead of serving the file, that will redirect to Air, uh, the Cloudflare R2, for instance. So we will control the entry points. We, won't, we would not have to point the domain name to Cloudflare. And the redirect will act like we do with the mirrors. 
the difference with the mirrors and why we don't use get Jenkins IO techniques is that first the redirection, but get the mirror bits as an Apache in front. So we, we might be able to use it with different host name though. The thing is that what we call mirrors is something we control because the reason of not putting update center on mirror bits, as far as I can remember, but maybe that can be changed, is that if we want to invalidate an update center cache, we need to control the invalidation process, which we cannot with sponsor-based mirrors that are pulling the data from us. However, we could think about using mirror bits with a specific installation only for that. And the only mirror will be ours, will be Cloudflare. That could allow us to project on China or have a fallback or think about that kind of scenarios, which mean we don't know and we need knowledge sharing from Daniel. Is that, did I capture everything we exchanged earlier? Did I forget element or things are unclear? No, seems good. Uh, let me check. Uh, no, it seems good. Okay. And on my side, I've started working on PKG origin Jenkins IO, which is the second service run on that machine. So the goal here um, is trying to move that service to Azure on on our uh, public and private infrastructure. So we'll move this to Azure. Because Fastly is in front, so no traffic or bandwidth to pay for. That would add HA. And also the core release process will not need to be run through uh, an SSH command. That means instead, if we have all the data during the packaging process that will run directly on the pod that is releasing and packaging everything, that will have access to the real data, generate the Debian and CentOS package inside the bucket. And that bucket will be immediately available through the public service on the public cluster. We could control finally the environment on a Docker image that would not constrain the Apache version because we, we would have separated elements and the uh, uh, data. And so that one will help a lot to getting away from that machine as well. So that's why we split the job per, per uh, service. Is that clear? Does it make sense? And did I forget something? No, okay. So that one will be our big next task for the upcoming weeks outside the artifact report. Any question or can I switch to the next one? Almost there, folks. No question, you can switch. Cool. So Matomo, uh, I propose we keep it on the next uh, milestone. We need to work on the topic, thanks Kevin, but we will lead you to all the operation we run during the past two weeks. So I hope that we should be able to start working on this one again soon. Uh, next uh, milestone looks okay for me. So I propose yes. we keep that one on the desk. Yeah, I've looked at uh, Gavin said that his repo was way more updated than the one in Jenkins Infra, but I didn't saw any difference. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's. Uh, I will yeah, call we, it we'll implementation yeah, okay. detail in the sense that yes, yeah, we sure. have to spend time on that. But yeah, thanks for the head up. That's uh, that is that says we can work on that. And Gavin uh, already did some work, and we need to help him on that area. Yes. Uh, proposal for application to migrate to RAM sixty four uh, got a delay until Stefan is back. Uh, we had a discussion and now everything is clear. He took notes, so we should be able to resume and it will be back in holidays when I will be back as well. So the goal is to have um, RM64 for all the static services on public gates now that everything has been done, upgraded, migrated. That will be Stefan's main priority because it will help to decrease cost uh, on different areas. 
Artifacto bandwidth reduction option, Mark. I think both of us are a bit late on that topic. Right. So that's that'll get some focus today and tomorrow from me. I've got I've got to propose uh, well proposed changes to the root palm for both Jenkins core and plugins. And then we've got to start evaluating what does that mean, et cetera, and dealing with the bumps and bruises of it. Thanks, so I'm keeping it. And finally, artifact caching proxy and reliable. I was late, but the goal is to open a pull request on ATH based on former Basil work. The goal is to start using ATH on every part, uh, ACP on every part of the acceptance test harness builds, not only the initial generation. So got to start a draft pull request and see if it break the ACP on Azure or if it's working now with the new network. I think that's all for the current element. We have new issues. So improve Datadog ingestion. Thanks, uh, Hervé. Yep. I think that's uh, to keep track of what we could do with Datadog uh, in the future. That one will we treated it. I've opened backup infrastructure data. I was sure we had an issue that you wrote an issue already, but I wasn't able to find it. So maybe that's a duplicate. But I try to put as much information as possible here to point the different elements we could have. That was triggered by the CI Jenkins Sayo former resource group deletion. And right now we have snapshot of the two former disks on the new resource group. And the goal will be to see the to study the Azure backup that create a vault of the data that can be migrated to another cloud if needed. So that one will be our encrypted vault uh, for storing data and recovering in case of a big problem. Mm. Uh, there was an issue on the developer extension backend crawler. Uh, Mark, I believe you took care of at least answering to this one. Well, I wish I could say I've taken care of it. I've got to do the research to find out what broke. I, I am reasonably confident I'm the one who broke it. And therefore, it's perfectly justified that I should be the one who fixes it. But I suspect I merged a dependabot change and the dependabot change um, passed all the tests, which hints that there are more tests needed. So there'll be some research and the outcome of that will eventually be tests that check that particular attribute and then only allow pull requests if that test passes. Okay, should we follow your recommendation and move that issue directly to the backend extension? And yes, so? I think it doesn't belong in, in our help desk. I, I don't think I have permission to make that move, but if someone else okay. does, I would love to have it in backend extension indexer because there's another issue somewhat like that from Daniel Beck already that's been moved to backend extension indexer. Okay, so I will take care of this one. Um, I will finish the notes with what we said uh, with the new issues. Uh, and I will give details on what we said. Uh, do we have new issues though? Uh, CIA are missing some metadata two weeks ago. Miss this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have users from China that have uh, low performances when trying to reach uh, either update center and or the download mirrors. Even though we have mirrors in China, we have way more than we, uh, that we knew. That could be interesting. Uh, so as we say to that person, they cannot use uh, archives or PKG. There is a, um, a lot of elements. So one of the uh, proposal we had, the Air 2 Cloudflare has ability to project copies inside China. So that could be a way to help our China users. But as we told to that person, we need a sponsor inside China because there are a lot of unknown knowledge uh, there are a lot of things that we don't know about how it is to live there. So uh, we have to use some friends there and now not anymore. So I've tried to ask the person gave us good details. So yeah, that I propose that we delay that to uh, after the work that Hervé is doing once we'll have migrated update center. Does it make sense for you? Yes. 
Um, and finally, remove, we already treated this one. So I don't see new issues here. Do you have new other topics to, to you want to so, mention? So I raised a, an issue that may be interesting to infrastructure. I'd like an opinion. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that I didn't solicit your opinion already, but pkg.jenkins.io and mirrors.jenkins.io both have um, installation instructions in their Debian and in their Red Hat subdirectories. But the installation instructions are, so if you pick Debian or Red Hat, either either of Debian stable or Debian, mm -hmm. you see a nice page that gives you some installation instructions and they're generally helpful. However, they are not the full installation instructions because the authoritative installation instructions are in the Jenkins user handbook. And the problem with these installation instructions is they are nice and simple, but they only tell you about Java 11 and we want you to use Java 17, but Java 17 isn't available on some Debian machines and yeah, on and on. And on. There's an awful lot. So the temptation I've had is to offer the pkg.jenkins.io should redirect for that page to this page and, and stop trying to present those simplified instructions because simplified instructions are inevitably the wrong instructions for some set of users. So the, I'm open to your opinions there and we could do it separately. Uh, it doesn't have to be today. It's mm -hmm. just, I've realized this page worked really well when there was only one Debian release to support. We now have 10, 11, and 12 with very different Java versions on them. When there was only one Red Hat version, the Red Hat page worked, but we now have eight and nine, and we have other variants like Rocky and Alma and Oracle, and and it's it's no longer a, a nice and simple world. Honestly, I think that's a, a brilliant and really useful idea because worst case it's adding redirections on Apache and or. And XHTML can also have serve a body that redirect if you have a web browser. Right. So yeah, combination of both. Uh, yeah, that makes sense for me. I mean, the other benefit there is it will stop the enumeration of directory contents that happens on some of those pages. And I, I just don't think there's enough value to people listing directory contents. I don't remember if it's mirrors or PKG that actually will list the directory contents, but... I just, I'm, I'm not persuaded that that's valuable. So just, it, it's a conversation topic. I'll bring the conversation topic separately in an issue. We don't have to resolve it here. Makes sense. Um, I, I think that's worth opening an issue to start the discussion here. Right. Don't forget about it because, I mean, that makes sense. That will help us, especially we had a confusing moment, uh, Irvian High, about finding which index HTML is generated from where. I right. don't know if you remember the GPG key rotation, the Jenkins uh, design, I forgot the name, uh, things, header and footer. So yeah, that will help definitively. Yeah, it, it, I don't think there's compelling value to having those exact web pages on the PKG site if instead we could redirect to documentation that really describes the situation for the user. Thanks for raising that topic, Mark. Do you have other major points here? None for me. Okay, so tomorrow, okay, I'm closing the issue and stay here. Uh, just need a quick sync to read the two of you and see you in two weeks for the other watching this recording. Bye-bye.